welcome back to the channel guys. I do hope you have been keeping well. Welcome back to the channel guys. I do hope you've been keeping well. So today we're going to do another unboxing and overview of a product and that is the MSI Gaming Force Z590. Now, why an unboxing? Unfortunately, I didn't have a chip to review this motherboard with, but I do still think that there's plenty to offer. Second question, why Z590 when there's Z690? Well, it's because it's still relevant for a lot of people that are looking at 11th gen, are looking to upgrade their current Z590s. So we are going to be looking at the design, the specifications, what this board has to offer. Obviously, all in theory, we will do a wrap up and a conclusion, but let's look at this unit a little bit closer. Looking at the design of the board, here it is right here. I just need to pick this up nice and carefully. It is quite a good looking board and we can see straight up there's quite a bit of cooling. There are three heat shields for the NVMEs which are all frozen. Or then looking at the top, we have got a massive heat sink on the MOSFETs as well as the IOs. So I don't think cooling is going to be too much of an issue for the motherboard itself. Looking more towards the bottom, there is a bit of a design flaw for me at least. If you look at the CMOS battery, it's it's actually shaped inwards towards the heatsink, which means that if you do have a failed post, you're not going to be able to quickly get that out. You're actually going to have to remove this entire shield. If they'd rotated it or moved that a little bit out, might have been a bit better. And there is no reset button uh, so that you can't clear the CMOS. So a little bit of a design flaw in, in my opinion there. We do have an LED indicator towards the top so we can see what's going wrong or right with the board. And you will be able to see that from your little booklet or you can look that up online. We do have DDR4 boost, which is pretty cool and also standard with regards to the design of MSI boards. We also have two reinforced PCIe Express slots, so that is because this motherboard is capable of running in Crossfire. Overall, it is quite a nice looking board and has everything that you typically look for in a board. Moving on to the actual specs, which kind of falls or overlaps with a bit of the design, but it is an LG A1200 and a Z590 chipset, which means that it can support up to i9. It does have four DIMM slots that supports overclock on five triple three megahertz. It actually can push past that. However, this is just the safe guidelines set by MSI. I've actually pushed inferior boards uh, past five triple three. So I do believe that that'll be the case again. There are three PCIe X 16 slots and two PCIe X1 slots. We do have a six SATA slots, which means that we can have six SSDs that are 2.5 or hard drives that are 2.5 or six hard drives that are 3.5. Moving on to the conclusion, let's start off with the retail price. So this retails for about 6,000 Rand or $300 for those buying in US dollars. Now, it's actually a good price for those who are not ready to move on to 12th gen yet because it is effectively half the price of the Z690 equivalent. Overall, the board is a really good looking board. Again, I can't speak to the stability of the board, but overall it has everything that one would require from a motherboard. The only thing that I would change on the board is with regards to the design design where they put the CMOS battery as well as the frontal. I would have liked to have seen that to be a USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 as well. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed the review. I will be doing more extensive tests when I do get a CPU for the board and I'll be able to give you all of the overclocking abilities as well as any stability questions that you may have. However, if you do have questions with regards to this board that I can answer, please post them below and I will get back to you. I hope you guys have a fantastic time wherever you are. Cheers and goodbye.